For more on the markets, let's go to our own Jared Blickery. And Jared, we were just talking about, Dave mentioned at the top of the show, NASDAQ, S&P on quite a winning streak as we look at the gains that we've seen over the last four weeks. Some on the street are saying that this rally actually has legs. What do you think? <laughs> it has some legs, but these are tenuous legs at best. Let's check out the price action. I think investors will welcome the fact that we are set for a fifth week of gains in the market. Of course, this is very early on in the goings here. S&P 500, excuse me, 100 up about four tenths of a percent. You can see we started out the day in the red there. But I want to look at a year to date chart with some candlesticks here. I've been showing this for a couple months now. Finally, we got that bear market rally lift off and we can see we are up 18 percent. That is from this low to these highs. You take a look at the Nasdaq. We are up nearly 25 percent, having eclipsed these numbers here, these uh, prior highs right there. But I want to go back to the S&P. P500. 4,200 was a big level. 4,300 is a big level, closing in on this potential resistance area right here. And we were mentioning those uh, potential headwinds. Well, Goldman Sachs has a number of them, and this comes by the market ear. I just want to go to some of the summaries here. Goldman Sachs estimating $28 billion worth of total systematic demand over the next one week, assuming a flat tape. So that's if the market goes nowhere. That's $5.5 billion going to come into the market for technical reasons. Don't need to get into the definition of systematic demand. Also estimating another $5.5 billion, so that's $11 billion total, total for, uh, worth of corporate demand. And that has to do with buybacks and some other factors. That's also hitting the tape this week. And then $2.2 billion was what happened last week, yesterday and last week, excuse me, not yesterday, Friday was a big update in the session. And then another factor, liquidity is expected to worsen as we head into Jackson Hole. That's that big Fed event at the end of the month. Now, lower liquidity means move to the upside and the downside can be exaggerated. So that's both uh, volatility inducing for the upside as well as the downside. Mutual funds sitting on a large pile of cash that's on the sideline. Hedge funds are regrossing. That means they're establishing positions for the first time in several weeks, oftentimes since the beginning of the summer. And then finally, retail, you only live once re-entering, and that is you only live once. Guess what? We've seen GameStop exploding to the upside, and it's no, it's no uh, coincidence that we've seen a lot of these consumers' names that have been beaten down. This is over the last month. Consumer discretionary up 18 percent, industrials up 15 percent, tech, materials, financials, energy, all of those outperforming along with real estate. So a pretty big, broad basket of stocks out. However, we do have some potential headwinds, guys. Indeed. And we'll talk about a lot of those sectors later on the program, Jared. But the Nasdaq up nearly 25 percent from the June lows, leaving investors wondering, are the lows in and am I missing out or should I be hedging? I'll tell you what, Dave, uh, there's, a, there's a saying in finance. You've got to hedge when you can, not when you need it. And let's take a look at what the VIX has been doing lately. If you need protection, now is the time to buy it because it's getting very cheap. So here's the SIBO VIX volatility index, a.k.a. the fear index. Uh, actually, this is the VIX of the VIX. Let's go to the VIX itself. That is now below 20, 20, kind of one, one of those big psychological numbers. Uh, 15 is also a bigger one. If you take a look at what had, had, had happened in the belly of last year, we got all the way down to about 15 and trended in that 15 to 20 VIX range for a number of months. We'll have to see if that continues, but the risks are to the upside. And I want to get to the strong dollar. That has really been a theme. Now, today the dollar is up versus a broad basket of currencies, but notably it is not up versus the Japanese yen. Now, here's a heat map that contains all of our U.S. dollar-based forex crosses. And you can see over the last month, uh, the dollar has been outperforming versus the Argentine uh, dollar there, uh, Argentine peso. U.S. dollar has been outperforming the ruble, uh, the Turkish lira, also the Chinese yuan. But what is not outperforming is some of the other haven currencies. Now, here's a very similar chart, a heat map with the Japanese yen as the numerator. And you can see uh, it has strengthened via some of these same uh, vehicles, some of these same currencies, such as the Argentine peso, such as the Chinese yuan, but also importantly versus the uh, Swiss franc, also versus the US dollar. So my point is when we have haven flows into the yen, that can be the marking of a big, big turnaround in risk reversal. We have a decade of low interest rates building up that yen carry trade where traders would borrow the yen and buy other assets if that unwinds, if that unwinds, and that's a big one, we could have a storm coming, guys. All right, a big if. Jared Blickery, good stuff. Thank you, my friend.